Welcome to Tokyo Saurus. So what's up in Japan? Now we all already know Netflix's Death Note live action sequel is a real thing. Netflix has confirmed it has begun development on it despite the initial controversy surrounding all the changes they've made to the characters as well as the casting. It seems like enough people are watching it and enjoying it, maybe, and the numbers are there for it to warrant a sequel. The hunger for more Death Note is real, and so Japan has finally decided to officially release the true Death Note sequel to the West. Death Note, light up the new world. It's a live action film, and it is the fourth Japanese live action Death Note film which premiered back when Your Name was released first in the theaters. It actually beat Your Name in the theaters when it first released, but that was probably because Your Name was already out for nine weeks. Death Note Light with the New World is set to release on January 22nd in 2019 in the West, so pretty soon, but what is this Death Note all about and is it worth your time? So I'm going to try to give you an idea of what it's about without spoiling too much of the story. Death Note Light Up the New World starts 10 years after the confrontation between L and Light. Once again, Shinigami are bringing Death Notes to the human world, and this time there's not one Death Note, not two, not three, but six Death Notes. Now if you remember from the original Death Note, rule number 49 states only six Death Notes are allowed to exist at a time in the human world. Death Notes owned by Shinigami do not count, and so this means only six Shinigamis that have passed on their Death Note to humans can stay in the human world. And the reason why six Death Notes were dropped onto Earth was because the dying Shinigami King, who was intrigued by Light, he promised to give his throne to anyone who was able to find the next Kira. Now, what is Death Note without two extremely smart individuals playing Catch Me If You Can? But this time, it's a battle between three. So on the first side, we have the true biological successor to L, who is Ryozaki. He was created from the original L's DNA and was raised at the Wami House to become a detective just like L. Before L's death, he made Ryozaki promise him to never use a Death Note. And soon after L's death, Ryozaki has taken on the title of L. And on the second side, we have a new member in the Death Note Countermeasure Task Force, with Mishima, who is absolutely obsessed with light, which is never a good sign. And finally, on the third side, we have Yuki Shien. The movie starts with Ryuzaki working with Mishima to find the Neo Kira, who has been starting the heart attacks once again all over the world. And this Neo Kira, named Yuki, is a cyber terrorist who is using his computer hacking skills to track down the six other Death Notes. He grew up as an orphan, and Kira killed his family's murderer, and since then, Yuki has been devoted to Kira. And so you got three characters, each with their own motivations, all very much connected to the actions of the previous L and Light Yagami, in an epic race to gather these six Death Notes. What's very interesting is how these Death Note holders use them to combat against the police or investigators that are able to fight with guns. Creative usage of the Death Note has always been a high point in the original story, and they definitely did it better here in the Japanese live action as compared to the more recent Netflix Death Note live action. If Netflix's Death Note live action was made for the uninitiated as a gateway introduction to the masterpiece original story, this Death Note live action was definitely made for fans of the original, whom have probably already seen all the previous Death Note anime movies as well as the manga. Either way, the general response to this movie was pretty polarizing, with some really liking it and some really hating it. It seems like there's a subsection of fans of Death Note that no matter what is made, they will still hate on it because it's not the original. But if you just try to enjoy it for what it is, it's probably still worth a watch. With that being said, this live action sequel is not written by the original author, so some of you would probably not treat this as a true sequel. But it's the only sequel we have, and it's most likely that the original author is not going to revisit Death Note. In fact, the author of the original Death Note has started a new manga called Platinum End, Back in 2015, it's still going on, and it's very similar to Death Note in that the main character is a teenage boy who is fed up with life, who then encounters supernatural forces that grant him power. But this time, instead of meeting a god of death, he meets an angel. And this angel tells him that god is going to retire in 999 days. 13 candidates were chosen to replace him, including the main character himself, and now they're in a contest to see who will win the spot. And of course, these 13 candidates are trying everything to win, and that of course includes killing each other. Definitely check it out if you miss OG Death Note. And now you also have another movie you can check out in about a month's time. Anyways, that is it for the sequel of Death Note. Some of you may have already watched it when it first came out in Japan, but there are definitely many people who haven't, so maybe you guys can let us know if you like the Japanese live-action Death Note films better or the Netflix adaptation better. As usual, let me know down in the comments below. Thumbs up if you liked the video, don't forget to touch the bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one.